Hi, I'm Adam Kolb, and you're at BeachCast. Let's define technical debt and contributing factors. Stick around and we'll get right on that. Thank you for being here. In my career, I've worked with many different companies and experienced a lot of developers and a lot of companies, and it always seems to come down to a lot of the same sort of things. Developers want to improve code quality. I don't think that there's any software developer out there that doesn't want to create the best code that they can. However, on the other hand, companies have to protect their investments, they have to protect the customers and ensure that they're delivering new features on time. These things don't always work together very well. A lot of times, companies just don't want to allocate the extra time that it takes to improve the quality of software. And sometimes that might be justified. So whether you're a developer or whether you're somebody working in a company managing developers, let's consider this a safe zone, someplace that we can talk openly about the pros and cons around software quality and allocating the time and resources to doing it. My goal with this video is not to take sides. However, as a developer and as a consultant for many years, I do tend to lean toward better quality code and regular iterative refactoring to improve the quality of code. There's many different reasons for that, just as there are some reasons why maybe you should forgo that given certain circumstances. So let's take a look at as many of those as we can uh, throughout the course of the video. To start with, I think it's very important that we all understand the definition of technical debt. We've probably heard a lot about technical debt. Some of you out there might be very familiar with it. Some of you might not be. So pardon me as I try to cover it a little bit for those who may not be aware of what it is. Certain programming that has been put into place ends up being not so good in the future. Now, that's probably the case with a lot of code. I don't know many software developers, myself included, who can create the best code right from the beginning. Oftentimes, we create code in an iterative fashion where we take a rough stab at what it's supposed to look like, what it's supposed to do, and then we come back and through iteration, we improve the quality of that code. Sometimes we don't get the chance to return quite as many times as we would like to, to get it to a pristine state. However, a pristine state also changes with time. What might be considered perfect code today and working great might not be that way in the future. Oftentimes developers look back on code that they did as much as a month ago or six months ago, and they're not even able to recognize the code and they look at it and they say, who wrote this code? So as a little bit more concrete of an example, think of technical debt much the same as financial debt. When a bank or some institution gives you a credit card, they give you a credit card with a certain amount of credit on it. And you buy things and you use the card for the payment. Well, little by little, if you haven't made a payment, little by little, you fill up that card to the point where it's just uh, not able to be paid off in full all at the same time. Now, I'm not saying that's good financial practice, but bear with me on the example. So at some certain point in time, you face a couple of decisions. Either you pay off the card a little bit at a time with the intent of eventually paying off the card so that way you don't have a balance on it any longer, or you go bankrupt and you completely get rid of the balance entirely. Now, let's look at software and how that might relate. Given, given an application, we're developing an application and little by little we take liberties with the code. And through those liberties, we end up building more and more debt within the code, more and more bad things that can cause bugs. It can cause it to be hard to read. And if things are hard to read, it takes developers longer to add new code to those code blocks. At some point, you face a decision. Do we start refactoring the code with the intent of improving it? Or do we just throw the code away entirely and, and rebuild the application from scratch? So that is what technical debt is as it relates to code. There, there are certainly more nuances that can be added to that, but I hope you understand just based on that simplistic example. I'd like to take a moment to introduce the sponsor for this video, Cloudways. Cloudways allows you to focus on your business and avoid web hosting hassles. 
Go live in minutes by selecting your application, selecting the vendor your server should be housed with, then select the server size for your chosen provider, and you're ready. Please use the affiliate link in the description below to support the BeachCast channel and to claim your one month of free hosting. The discount code BEACHCASTS will be automatically applied to your signup. Now you may be saying, Adam, why don't we just cut out the causes of this bad code? Why don't we just stop doing the technical debt? So there's a lot of different reasons why technical debt exists. One of those is lack of requirements. If you are a developer and business is coming to you and asking you to build something, if they don't have the full set of requirements, a developer will build the best that they can as much as they understand the requirements. So that's why it's infinitely important that you define requirements from the very beginning. Now imagine, if you will, a customer comes to you with a vision of something that has four legs and a trunk and they want you to build it and, and build it to look exactly the way they have it in their mind. Maybe some big floppy ears, something along that line. Now, their vision is one thing. However, you come back and you build something and you make sure that it has a big trunk. You make sure it has four legs. You make sure it has big floppy ears. And then you present it to the customer and they say, wait a minute, I was envisioning an elephant and what you gave me is not exactly an elephant. Well, the requirements were met. You gave them exactly what they asked for. However, it wasn't true to the vision. This is why requirements are really important to ensure that you are building what the customer really desires. Another cause for technical debt can be lack of education. Maybe the developer doesn't understand certain practices, algorithms, or other ways to create better code. Now, iteratively, they can improve that at a little bit at a time. But through education and through learning better coding practices, better coding conventions, we can make sure that code is written better and through refactoring, make it even better than, than it started out. Along with that is lack of experience. Even the most knowledgeable of programmers watching videos, doing training and doing regular coding, it's hard to beat actually hands-on coding and learning from your mistakes. Learning through trial and error is always going to be the best teacher for, for developers or for anybody for that matter. One of the biggest pitfalls while we're developing uh, that attribute to technical debt is lack of time. If the company needs things done in a very expedient manner, and maybe there hasn't been enough human resources put on the project to ensure that it gets done in time, time can really force us to take shortcuts and maybe not clean things up as much as we would like. And that is probably one of the biggest attributors to technical debt is the lack of proper time to deliver the features that have been requested. And let's not forget testing. Testing as well is another reason that technical debt makes it past your development stage, makes it past your QA phase, makes it into production eventually. If you don't have proper testing in place, if you're not doing unit tests, if you're not doing behavioral tests, functional tests, and, and ensuring that the code is doing what you intend it to do, it's really easy for things to enter into an, a more advanced stage and maybe the quality of the code is not so great. Maybe the application has a lot more bugs than we anticipated it having. In conjunction with testing, you also want to make sure that you have a good refactoring plan. Refactoring is very important for code because as I said earlier, there's no way that a developer, anybody for that matter, can create perfect code from the very beginning. Instead, through iteration, we improve the code, we improve the things that we did previously and get them to the point where it is stable, it is secure, uh, it, it does has less bugs and causes a lot less issues. The lack of a refactoring plan can cause a lot of technical debt. So how do these things happen? How do all these things that attribute to technical debt, how do they come about? A leading way that things like this end up coming to fruition 
is through a company having very short deadlines. Maybe the customers are very demanding. Maybe in the past, the company itself did not have the features that the customers wanted. And the customers are now in a position where they're requesting it. And it's important that it's delivered quickly. Otherwise, you lose the customers. So from a company standpoint, I totally get it. It's very important that we deliver what our customers want. But by the same token, it can really attribute to having technical debt. Hand in hand with that is impatience. If everybody's looking and they're expecting things to be done, it's very easy if you're not a developer to become impatient and expect things to be done faster than they realistically can. I can't tell you the number of times that I've had a business person look at a feature and say, wow, it seems so simple. Why can't it just be done? Maybe it's not so straightforward as the customer thinks it is. So if proper time is not given, one of two things has to happen. Either the business has to be able to take concessions and have fewer features, or the developer has to take shortcuts and sacrifice the quality of the code. One other key factor that attributes a lot to this is financial. It's not uncommon for developers to reach out to me and say, Adam, I really know I need to refactor. Business is just not listening. They're not allowing us to do it. How can I get around this? Well, hopefully I cover some things in this video that help you. However, when it comes down to it, what their business people are telling you is that you have not substantiated enough for them to be able to make that financial decision. Payroll is, is a big chunk of application development. And if you have a lot of people being put onto a project, that's a lot of payroll. So companies have to look at it from a common sense standpoint and figure out what is the right number of human resources to add on to a project. If you need more people for a project, you need to let the business know that, but don't just say it in very vanilla terms. Make sure you're sharing good facts with them. If they don't understand how it affects them, if they don't understand how it affects the application or their customers or sales, they're not likely to make a decision in your favor. If you found this video helpful, please like the video. It helps other people find the video and makes it more discoverable on YouTube. I really appreciate your help with that. And above all, be good to yourself and others, and I'll see you next time.